This is the layout for my city's downtown area. Besides the basic application of road hierarchy, it was also planned for public transport infrastructure by incorporating a train station with international rail access, complemented by a rail network for trams. In this video, we'll put this infrastructure to good use and develop a public transport system of trains, trams, buses and taxis that all complement each other and cover not only this area, but the entire city. I started with the area surrounding the train station. This location will be perfect for a public transport hub, a place where people can arrive in the city via international rail or buses and quickly switch to other lines or transport options to access anywhere within the city. I adjusted the road layout to place a bus station right in front of the train station. This facility can house multiple bus lines and will be important for strategic routes like connecting an industrial site in a remote location directly to the city center. Something that I thought was really cool and unique is the tram line here, which I built on top of the avenue between both the train and bus stations using a pedestrian road. Because the area where I'm building this is sunken, I can make an elevated pedestrian road without having any steep elevation changes in the tram rail itself. I then extended the tram infrastructure to the rest of the city. There was a nice empty space I could use to relocate the tram depot. This was also a good location for a tall telecom tower, which I had to place because a lot of people were complaining about the lack of internet already. The tram is extended all the way until the suburbs, following along the main avenue of the midtown and ending in a loop between the residential area and the generic industrial district. With the basic infrastructure built, I then upgraded the train station with extra platforms, local shops, taxi stands, all that good stuff and built a couple of international passenger lines linking to the two adjacent cities of the map. For the time being, these are the only lines we can build here, but whenever we have other train stations in the city, they can obviously be connected with local lines as well. I moved on to build our tram line, but here I had to place the tram stops before building the line itself. I don't understand why we are required to place the stops manually and then build a route. Why not just have the stops and shelters being automatically created in the road wherever you click while building the route, just like in the previous City Skylines game? I don't really think it justifies the overcomplication and the extra work which is noticeable and tedious especially when you're making long lines with 20 plus stops for example. The system works the same for buses. For the bus network, I added dedicated bus routes in strategic places to make the lines shorter and more direct. The undeveloped area in the midtown, between the high school and college, is linked with the dedicated bus road. This will have to be adjusted later to remove unnecessary traffic lights and crosswalks with all those extra intersections, but I think this is a good way of diverting traffic from the main avenue. Some people mentioned cars were going over the grass when going into the parking lots at the high school, so I removed the grass and trees in some locations. This doesn't fix all issues though. I really like the tram track in the public transport hub. It is built with a pedestrian road, so besides serving as a tram stop for the hub below, it also allows for people to cross the city above easily. The tram line is connected to the hub with a pedestrian road ramp. Personally, I think this ramp is a bit too thick, but it was the only option as pedestrian paths glitch out when connecting directly to elevated pedestrian roads as the safety rail is not removed. <laughs> 
people can still use this junction, but it just looks wrong. Here's an overview of the city starter public transport network. For trains, there's a couple of international train lines linking the city's downtown transport hub to the adjacent cities. From here, visitors can catch the single tram line and go to either downtown or go the opposite direction, towards the midtown or the suburbs. As mentioned, trams follow a regional coverage approach. What I mean by this is that trams have the functionality to link different areas of the city together. You can see that the single tram line in the city travels pretty much the entire city in its length. Buses, on the other hand, I think make more sense when following a local coverage approach. In other words, buses serve the function of picking up passengers anywhere in a particular district and taking them to other areas within the same district or to the nearest tram stop where people can switch to travel to more distant areas. Of course, this is just the way I plan this city's public transport system based on past experience with the first City Skylines game and is by no means a rule that you should follow, as nothing says that you must use buses for short distances. In fact, besides the local bus lines that you see here, I also built a couple of international lines linking the hub to the adjacent cities to provide more options for people to get into and out of the city, as well as a regional industrial line connecting to the stone, cold and ore mining sites. There seems to be some streets that are not connected to bus lines, but there are a lot of pedestrian pathways crossing the roads perpendicularly, so people can easily find a bus stop nearby, even if there isn't one in their own street. I also built a taxi depot and added some taxi stands where I thought it would make sense, because I noticed there were a lot of taxis in the city already coming from other cities. This network is of course going to be adapted as the city grows. For example, the tram line can extend to either side, and I've already built a network for a second tram line perpendicular to the existing one whenever necessary. When it comes to the metro, I might want to add this option to the city later, but because the metro infrastructure is underground and the stations take very little space, there was no need to plan for it at this stage. The first thing I've done after building the tram and bus lines was to reduce the number of vehicles in every single one of them to the minimum. This was because the line usage was very low in most of them, which you can see in the line overview panel, which basically means that vehicles are running empty most of the time. As the city grows, this is something that I should monitor and adjust according to necessity. While I let public transport routes adjust after activating them, I developed and detailed some things. You might have already noticed the park behind the train station, as well as the detailed vegetation. I'll show you the building process later in the video. Because I had a lot of demand, I also developed the downtown a bit more and filled another block in the layout, which led to a population increase from 12k to around 17k. I used the same methodology that I used on the already developed block, mixing high-density residential, office and commercial buildings, as well as mixed zoning in some areas. This will add to architectural diversity, making this downtown much richer and visually striking. At least, that's the plan. The empty areas in between the buildings that cannot be zoned can be converted into natural city parks, connected with a robust pathway system that boosts walkability. These areas are also good for larger buildings, like the couple of underground parking lots that are placed next to each other. Speaking of parking lots, some people didn't like that I placed these between the buildings, but I like the diversity that they bring to this area. I can also use a lot more of these underground ones, which have a higher capacity. There's also an overground parking building, which I think looks pretty good, and I will build eventually. Another major development that I've done was the building of the first city hospital. This location is pretty central, with easy access to the highway, as you can see, and by building it in the area just outside the road layout, I'm not taking away a lot of zoning space or having to adjust the roads for this massive building. I also built a crematorium right next to it for, you know, quick travel between both facilities, 
as well as a small access road behind for a small telecom tower as the signal was a bit weaker on this side of the downtown. At the entrance of the hospital, I try to use the space between roads to make a cool park. By building a straight pathway in the middle, I was able to then build this wavy pattern using the curved road tool and disabling certain guidelines to try and make all circular segments look the same. The pathways are then outlined with bushes and trees to make it look more detailed. I've done the same thing to the crematorium as well. This is just to delineate public areas a bit more. People ask me why I don't use mods for this type of tree placement. Well, if you know me, you know that I try to play as vanilla as possible. I don't like managing a big mod library and ensuring that they're all up to date. That's just not how I enjoy playing games like this. Second, the mods for City Skylines 2 that are out there are not official so I'd rather wait for the release of the official mod platform whenever that happens. Anyhow, after decorating the hospital, I then proceeded to decorate the recently developed block in the downtown area. Finally, I moved to the transport hub. I didn't know what I wanted to do with this area behind the train station. First, I thought about the monument, but because the asset library is so limited yet, I decided to make a custom park instead, providing access from the downtown above directly to the transport hub below, with this cool circular pattern of pathways. A pedestrian road is extended to this area horizontally after raising the terrain level and I then adjusted the terrain and built the pathways going at the slope until reaching the ground level, where the pathway would then tunnel and connect to the hub. I then extended the pathways in the entire area to build this custom park. These pathways are not being used because there's nothing developed in this side of the downtown yet but I expect certain pathways to be used in later stages by people wanting to catch the train or the tram. Unfortunately, other pathways in this park will probably remain unused and will serve mostly a decorative purpose, because they don't lead to actual entertainment assets. I added some dedicated bus lanes around the bus station, so that buses are not affected by potential traffic congestions in this area. I hope. I zoned some small shops and offices and also adapted some roads to have grass, trees or white sidewalks to make it look pretty and also to remove parking spaces on the sides. Then came the tedious yet therapeutic process of detailing with the manual placement of trees and bushes. This is a process that usually takes the most time, but also makes everything look vibrant and just better. In this case, for example, I outline with bushes the pathways that are right next to hills for theoretical safety reasons, and also some pathways where I thought it would make sense or would just look better. Imagine the gardening costs for maintaining this city, if those were a thing in this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can watch the next one here.